Hey everyone, it's Adam in the AeroWorks Workshop and today we're going to be talking about the Skysmere Mammoth Drop System for the DJI M210 series. We're going to be covering the installation, some programming and what you're going to need to get this installed on your DJI M210. So stick around. All right, so let's take a look at what you get in the kit. The first thing obviously you get is the Mammoth Drop System itself. Now this is a very nicely machined uh, aluminum and stainless steel unit. It's got a Metal Gear servo inside, so it's very high quality. It's got your standard servo connector on the, on the back side. You're also gonna get the actual mount for the Mammoth System. Now one thing with this system is that you can mount up to three of these units on one aircraft, so if you wanted to have three of these mounted on here, you could do that. Uh, you could think of that for a myriad of reasons why you might want to have three on there, but in search and rescue, things like that, you might have to drop multiple payloads out in the field. Right now, we're going to cover the installation of one. So what we're actually going to do is take the main mount. We're going to take the quick release bracket that's also included in the kit. We're going to mount that to our drop system. And then using a quick release thumb screw, we'll be able to take this on and off so that we can get it into our case. Now that's one thing to keep in mind with the system is that you are gonna have another bracket on the bottom of your M210 and while it doesn't take up a lot of room, you do have to consider that it may have to, uh, you may have to alter your case slightly. Also in the kit, you're gonna get all the hardware you need uh, along with a couple Allen wrenches. We prefer to use the, uh, the Milla 3, one to three millimeter screwdriver set um, that you'd have to provide yourself, but they do give you two Allen wrenches for all the bolts and nuts you're going to need in here. You do get the two quick release screws as well as some zip ties to tidy up that connector on the back. So before we get started, we've obviously taken off our payloads here. We obviously don't want to be flipping the aircraft upside down while we're installing that. Um, but the next step we're going to do is we're going to clear our bench here and we're going to go ahead and flip this upside down so that we can take off the stock landing gear mounts. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right guys, now you can see we've taken the gear off the M210 and we put down a pad to set the unit on. The next step we're gonna do is two things. One, because we are using the quick mount bracket, we have to insert the screws into the bottom bracket first because that will be going up under the M210. Now as far as the hardware goes, you really can't mess up. It's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll run through it. You have some beveled hex head screws here. These are for mounting the actual mammoth to the recessed mount, and you can see that they're beveled, which means they sink in and they sit flush. We have the actual landing gear mount long screws, which have a ball head type on it. And then we have the thumb quick release screws with a lock washer, and those are the ones that we're gonna be using right now. So I'm gonna take those two, and because we know the, mount, the unit is gonna mount from the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and screw these down in from the top. And we can just do that finger tight, until we get to the star lock washer. And then we'll snug those up with our 3.0 millimeter screwdriver. Let's get these started here. Take our hex head screwdriver and run these all the way until they come out the bottom. This is gonna be the quick release mount again for our mammoth drop system. So again, I'm gonna run those in, give it a snug, and now we essentially have created a stud to mount the thumb screws, excuse me, thumb screws on when we go to put the quick release on there. So that's step one. Our next step, we, get, we need to go ahead and remove the stock brackets that hold the landing gear system on the M210. And that's simply done by removing these mounting screws on the side here and replacing them with the longer screw that comes in the kit. I'm going to go ahead and start removing those now. These are fairly short, the stock ones, so it doesn't require a lot to get them out. And there is three, so you're going to have to get to that bottom one on here to get to the uh, bottom screw. Once you get those out, you want to go ahead and remove your mounts. 
We won't be using the short screws anymore, but it would be good to go ahead and save those and set those aside. All right, the next step is we're gonna be sliding on the bracket from the bottom. However, we do wanna put our waterproof gasket material in there. Okay, get that all centered up. Start with our long screw. Okay, we got one started there. Best thing to do is get one started on each side first. Make sure you've got your holes lined up and your screws started before you cinch anything down. It's always a must. You can kind of pull the bracket away a little bit to see the space and see your screw hole and then get it started. Then you can go right in with that. So I'm going to continue on. Again, there's three screws per side. You want to make sure and get them all in, but start them all first before you cinch them down. And make sure that you're getting your bracket, uh, your gasket in there as well, because you want to retain that weather re uh, resistance on the M210. And if you don't have the gasket in there properly, you're not going to have that rating anymore. Okay, I've got all three screws started on each side. And basically all I want to do is just snug these screws up until that rubber washer on the back, the new rubber washer kind of squishes down. You can feel the tension on there. And you'll feel it just slightly get some friction on the screw. Again, we don't want to over torque anything. Basically finger tight here. I'm snugging this up and then I'm going to kind of go around in a start pattern like you would on a tire if you were changing a tire and just kind of check them all one more time. Snug those up. They don't have to be cinched down. You don't want to crack your case. We just want them snugged up. Okay, we've got both sides done. Now we can go ahead and uh, put the landing gear on and start working on actually mounting up the quick release mount. All right, now you can see we've got the bracket all mounted up on the bottom of the M210. We've got the quick release studs that we put in in the first step coming to the bottom. Now that's where our quick release bracket is going to slide onto so that we can remove this when we put it in our case. So the first step we're going to have to do here before we can finish up the installation is actually mount the mammoth system to the quick release plate. We're gonna need a few things. First, we're gonna need those bevel screws that we showed you in the beginning. We're gonna need the adapter plate, which has a smooth side and it also has a side with the screw holes that are beveled. So we want the beveled side facing up. We're gonna place that right over the top of the mammoth mount and then we're gonna go ahead and install the screws. Now I would recommend uh, putting a little bit of blue Loctite on here which we'll do with the completion of ours. Uh, we didn't have any in the beginning of this, but we'll, we'll probably do it when we wrap up our installation. Just put a little dab on the end of the screws. That'll keep these from backing out with vibration. But right now, they're pretty snug. We're gonna go ahead and put those in. Again, put them all in loose at first, and then when you get them all put in, you can go ahead and go back and snug those down uh, in a kind of a star fashion. Okay, we got one more to do. The nice thing too in the kit, they do give you a couple extra screws for each type that you use. So if you do happen to drop one or lose one, there is another one in the kit. Okay, we've got that one snugged up. We could jump across to this one. Snug, snug. You can see I'm doing this in a crisscross pattern to kind of snug these up. And there we go. All right. Now, the last step really in the installation as far as the physical part of the installation is to mount that onto the bottom. And we're simply going to do that by placing this over the mounting studs and installing our thumb screws. And they just go right up like that. Now you could, I suppose, put some uh, plastic lock washers on here if you were concerned with this coming loose in the air. We haven't heard any issues of that, but just go ahead and snug those up nice and tight. And then we'll complete the installation by actually doing the programming and the physical connections on the back of the machine. But you can see that the mount is on here. We've got the bracket on, we've got the quick release, and it's all mounted up. Now you can, if you plan on leaving this on permanently, you could tidy this core, uh, cable up by zip tying that so that it stays out of the way of the propellers, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Next step, we're gonna go into the programming of the auxiliary ports on the back, and we'll do that right now. So what we wanna do here, we've got the split cable here. You're gonna to wanna to put that into the first slot and you really can't mess that up because it's got a slot right on there. You're gonna push that all the way in and then we're gonna grab the five volt power from the last port, which is where that little notch is there. You're gonna just simply insert that into there. 
Make sure those fit in there all the way and then you're good to go. And next we're going to go on to programming up the port and how to actuate the opening and closing. All right, now to configure the ports on the back of the M210, we've got to get into the main system menu. So we're going to go ahead and hit the main system icon under the drone icon there. We're going to come down to the very bottom and you're going to see extended I.O. options. You want to go ahead and expand that open. And you're going to see some ports here. Now we plugged into port one on the back, as we described in the video earlier. Let's go ahead and expand open port one. And we want to switch over to the PWM side. This is how we control servos. So I'm going to click PWM. And we have two values here. We want to set the first value, the duty ratio, to 100. And we're going to set the frequency to 100, just like you would with the keypad. You're going to say done. We're going to say update. And we're going to say OK. OK. Now our drop system just closed, as you saw there. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to back up one arrow here. And we're going to save the current configuration. So we're going to touch that. Let's go ahead and give that a name. We'll go ahead and call it Mammoth Open, or excuse me, Close. And we'll say Done. We'll say OK. OK. Now we're going to go right back into port one again. And we're going to change the duty ratio to 200. Basically what we're doing here is we're creating two configurations for the same port. So we left the frequency at 100, we changed due to ratio to 200. We're going to say done. We're going to say update. And you can see that our drop system opened. So now we want to save that configuration. So we're going to go back one arrow. We're going to say save current configuration. And let's go ahead and call this mammoth open. Save that, save that. Okay, now we have two configurations in there. So to activate the two configurations, we're going to go to the Manage Local Configurations. And you can see that we now have a Mammoth Open and a Mammoth Close. Currently, we're in the open state. So if I want to close it, I'm going to touch Mammoth Close. I'm going to say Load the Configuration and OK. And our system closes. To open it, I just simply slide down here or find on my list where I say Open. Hit load configuration, OK, and the system opens. To close it, load configuration, OK, and the system closes. So that's the basic programming operation that is required to operate the system. Now to back out of this menu, we're just going to hit the back arrow and back arrow again, and it's going to say that you didn't save anything. Just cancel that and hit back arrow again. Now when we come back into the I.O. options, you're going to have the Manage Local Configuration. We just simply click that. And you see we have two operations here. You can do either open or close, load your payload up, fly out, and drop it. All right, guys, now that we've got the system installed, normally we cover pros and cons with systems like this. However, there really aren't any cons with the Skysmere system itself. They give you all the parts you need. They give you the tools you need. It's got the ability to mount two additional drop systems to it. It works fantastic. The only cons really come on the DJI side, and that is the fact that it's a little cumbersome to program in the software, and the fact that currently with the radio, we cannot assign a button or lever to actually release the drop system. We have to do it through a menu. So, you know, once DJI comes around and maybe allows us to program a button, it'll be a 100% perfect system. Right now, though, the Skysmith system is great for law enforcement, search and rescue, fire, etc. So if you need one, We'll put a link down in the description where you can get one. If you have any other questions or concerns with the system, make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And until the next video, we'll see you next time. It's Adam with AeroWorks Productions.